Okay, all you mathletes. We're going to put everything we know about transformations together. So our horizontal, our vertical, as well as our stretch and reflections. Okay. The A value in vertex form. The sign, if the sign is positive, which means A is greater than zero, it opens up. We've known that before. Excellent. If the sign is negative, which really means A is less than zero, it opens down. Now, the actual value stretches the parabola. So if we think about that, the actual number, if the actual number, and this is something that we learn later on, absolute, so forget about the sign, but if the actual number is greater than zero, then compared to our default parabola, it is going to stretch, look skinnier. Now if the absolute number is less than one but greater than zero whether it's positive or negative negative just means it's going to open down but it's still going to change it the same way compared to our default parabola it is going to look wider because if you think smaller than one bigger than zero is a fraction or a decimal 0.5 each point is going to be 0.5 or halfway as high or as tall as it should be. So it's going to look fatter because it takes longer to start to rise. If this confuses you, just think about it's going to stretch it. Either make it skinny or it's going to stretch it that way. Okay, the K value. If k is greater than zero, which again means it's positive, it's going to translate up or shift up. It's going to actually move it up. If k is less than zero, so negative, it's going to shift. Now I'll use different words, so we can use any one of these. Shift down. Again, k is outside of the brackets. It's telling the truth. If our H value and again what the actual thing is brackets lie so with that in mind just the actual value of H if H is greater than 0 which again is positive positive H times a negative in the equation would mean that looks like negative H in there it translates or shifts right. And again, that is towards the positive side of the x-axis. If h is less than 0 or a negative number, it's going to shift left that many units. Negative h times negative will look like a positive in the bracket. If that confuses you, go back to 4.01. So what does that mean? A reflection. We're going to multiply something by negative 1. If we think about our transformations, x and y, what's going to happen? We decided that our reflection is going to be a times y. So we're going to multiply our y values by negative 1. If it's a stretch, we're going to multiply, again, our y values 
by the A value. Those are both on the Y. Our translation, we're going to add or subtract our H value to X. Then we're going to add or subtract our K or whatever is in the K position of vertex form to Y. So shifting it left or right is straightforward. Up and down and multiplying, we need to think about our order of operations. We're going to multiply first and then add. So let's do an example of that, of everything all together. Okay, given that y equals x minus 3 all in brackets squared plus 1, state the following. What are the transformations? How is it shifted? So right now, I have something in the k value, and I have something in my h value. If I think about my order of operations, left and right, up and down, I can talk about left and right first. So it is translated or moved three units. Negative makes me think towards the negative of the x-axis, but brackets lie. So instead of left, it's going to go right. So it's translated right three, you could say units. And then brackets lie, that's not in brackets, up one. So this is the work, mapping notation with five additional key points. So my mapping notation is x, y, what are those default points? So whether I either draw my table values and say negative two, four, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, two, four, or if I put them in brackets as points, how are they going to shift? And remember that is y equals x squared. So how is that going to shift? Well, if x needs to move right three units, I'm going to add three, brackets lie, so I'm going to add three. My x values, my y values are all going to go up one. So all of these points are going to become a new graph or new table values. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 3. 1 plus 3 4. 2 plus 3 5. So that point moved there, that x moved there, that x moved there, that x moved there, that x moved there. My y values 4 plus 1 is 5. 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. 4 plus 1 is 2, 4 plus 1 is 5. And so there's my new table, and I'll do that so we can see clearly. So I can do it this way, is one way to show. And so now these are points, with the middle one being my vertex, to the left and to the right. Now I can graph this. So the vertex and the axis of symmetry, that was my vertex. My axis of symmetry was there, it has shifted there. So my vertex is now 3, 1. My axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Let's actually graph this. 1, 5, 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 2, and 5, 5. So I'm just going to put some extra here as I talk to myself, just to help my problem be the best one. Well, that, that side looks good. Let's see if I can duplicate that. Oh, that is a thing of beauty, let me tell you. So this is the graph that corresponds to that equation. This is the matching parabola. I found where the vertex is without having to guess by you showing mapping notation.
mapping notation with five points, five points to draw a parabola. Now, a max or a min? Well, the A value is positive, which means it's going to open up. Okay, A is positive, so it opens up. It does open up, which means it's going to have a minimum. And the minimum, the lowest it gets, is a 1. A minimum, and remember you can say y equals 1, or you can write a minimum of 1. And there's our minimum. And there's an example.